Lord Explorer here, we're at the Bulow Ruins State Park. It's a very interesting little sign I just saw. I haven't seen it quite put like that. This is a listing of all the plantations, sugar plantations in this area. They're supposed to be the remains of 13. Some are like this and some are just foundations but anyway um, this is probably the most impressive of all of the extant sugar mill ruins in the state Gamble and Yu Lee being the other two but neither of them are the remains of which are not anywhere near comparison to as extensive as these are um, Bulow acquired this land and built this place in 1821 and he passed in 1823 leaving it to his son who uh, turned around and made it into a, a thriving concern by his enterprise um, in 36 I believe it was the Seminoles came through and burned this, uh, burned all these plantations, essentially. They, they just raided all up and down the coast and burnt, burnt all these, uh, burnt all these uh, plantations to the ground, this one included, and it never opened back up. It, it, that was it. Once it got burnt down, that was, they were done with it. This is, this is like, to me anyway, it's like Florida's version of Roman Colosseum or something. Yeah, that's an absurd comparison, but to see something like this still standing almost 200 years later. I mean, that is just, especially coming from Tampa Bay area where there isn't very much remains there aren't very many remains there aren't a lot of certainly aren't very many things this old there's very few there's very few even grave sites that old there in fact there are no grave sites that old that way I think the, well the earliest settlers started coming in the 1840s so <clears throat> So to come over here and see something like this, or to go up to St. Augustine and see something like Matanzas, is, you know, or, or Castillo de San Marcos, it's been there as long as it has. It's just, uh, it's just really incredible stuff. So these guys that came and built these plantations, they uh, were given essentially grants from the king or the English king and or, or Spanish king also, I believe, uh, granted some of the English um, these grants while the Spanish still had it. But at one point the Spanish ceded it. And of course the Americans got it. But nobody wanted to come down here back in the day. But it was a prime growing land, prime, you know, agricultural area. growing stuff. Rice, sugar cane, primarily sugar cane seems to be the crop of choice, but for some reason this area was just a super fertile area and super attractive to these people. I'm sure a lot of it had to do with its being geographically situated along the coast. The east coast was already uh, being settled and populated. Um, was the west coast of Florida was basically the other side of the moon for these people. So it would have been it would have been unthinkable for them to to go over there. 
and there really was no way. I mean, you had to sail all the way around the tip of Florida through the Keys, all the currents and all that stuff going on down there, and then all the way back up. It just wasn't economically feasible. Just easier to drop down here and right along the coast. Build it up. That's pretty neat. So this is what this is what his home looked like. So we're gonna photograph it and uh, drive around a little bit, but um, for the most part, this pretty much ends the day of ruins. Might go down to Dunlawton and see that. That's more of a, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a botanical garden surrounding it apparently. tourist attraction I would think whereas this while not you know entirely out in the wilderness it is a good little ways off the main road uh, we came in on a very on the original beach road we came in on actually the road that was built in in the early 19th century I mean it's the original road that was here and this place was here it was the way that he got in and out or whomever worked here or owned it or whatever got in and out so that was um that's pretty cool and it went all the way to the beach it went across Bulow Creek of course it no longer does but that would have been uh that that that's a pretty cool road I mean that's the original road so and here we have a little diagram of how this is done so you can get a sense of I mean this is still in, in 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 the in the woods in the wilderness. I mean, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, in a sense, I mean, it's it doesn't look now like it would have then because I mean, this all this would have been cleared. It would have, all these all these none of these trees would have been here, or very few of them. Another thing that's really cool about this particular site at this time is, with, with one exception, we have the place to ourselves. And the last time I was here, it was uh, quite crowded. We're going to go over to this little kiosk interpretive center thing here and see what we can find. Some original artifacts from the site. First field. Oh, them hoes are huge, man. That's a big old hoe, boy. Axe heads, broad axe. You have to be a man's man to swing that thing. That's a big old axe. Well, here's a 
withdrawing or the surrendering of the sugar mill. The foundation was made of coquina, but the Of course, the the the, the, uh, the roof and the sides and everything of the housing part of it would have been made. So that's the that's the father. Would have been made out of wood. And Audubon came here and on his one of his excursions and that's apparently original yeah that's an original Audubon there very neat that is very cool wow details incredible wow No, I'm, I'm sorry, I see it's a print. It's a print, it's not an original. I was wondering if an original would be safe in that kind of condition. But the little placard says it's a print. All right, we're going to extensively photograph this place and move on. From Bulow Sugar Mill Ruins, we are out. <laughs>